Okay, uh, we're going to talk to you now a little bit about the colors of the data vault, and I'll explain to you what that means in just a moment. Um, as you get started, I will tell you that uh, this is really just a different approach to looking at the implications of data vault modeling versus other approaches to data vault modeling. So let's jump right in. Um, if we were to take uh, the concept of a table structure, an entity or a table structure uh, in third normal form or in star schema, and look inside it and say, what is it that constitutes the types of information that's stored inside it? We can see that um, we tend to store things like a business key. We tend to store things that have to do with the relationships or the links between um, that and other table structures. And we also have a bunch of descriptive information. In this case, what we're doing is we're saying, um, if I look at a business key as blue, if you can see the color blue here, if I look at relationships, associations, or links as red, things that link things together, and I look at yellow as all the descriptive, um, definitional information that helps to provide context to something that we're describing, um, then you'll notice that here in third normal form and in star schema, typical table structures include all three kinds of data. Now, we're going to get into this in a little more detail. The data vault is separating out these three types of data into their own table structures. So let's take a look at what that means. Um, if you look at the colors of third normal form, and here's a very typical uh, sale type um, data model, and just like the receipt in your pocket, uh, the receipt in your pocket probably has some kind of header information that tells you which store uh, you purchased something from. It might have your credit card number or the last couple digits of it to denote the customer. It may have an employee code. And it's also probably got a list of multiple items that you purchased. So you went and bought a, a Coke and a cheeseburger uh, and a bag of fries. Um, healthy combination. I don't know why you would buy that. Um, but those, those things that, um, that actual um, uh, uh, line item table is going to tell us which products you actually purchased on that sale. So in, in order to encapsulate the sale, again, the receipt in your pocket, we need to have a header table, and the header table is that sale. We also need to have a line item which tells us which products were on it. In this case, you can notice that all tables have a business key, all tables have some kind of foreign key associations in it, foreign key links in red. And they also have some form of yellow, which helps to describe that particular entity. Um, take a brief look, though, at the, um, at the table called region. You'll notice in region, I don't have any red. I don't have any red because in this case, region doesn't have any link to anything else above it. So in other words, it's not borrowing a key for something like, say, county or country from something else. Uh, region is the end of the game here. Once we describe a business key in the region, uh, we don't have other things we need to link it to. The store is in a region, so it needs to borrow the foreign key from region in order to work its way in. And this is a very common uh, data modeling uh, approach that you've probably done in, in a modeling class at one point or another. Converting this to a star schema, we can see that um, what we've done is we've taken a fact around the concept of sale. And you'll notice that the fact table has all of the foreign keys in it. It has all of the associations because it's taking the foreign key from customer, employee, region, product, store, and vendor into its own um, uh, embodiment, its own structure, in order to have the descriptive details for the fact found one link away or one association away uh, in each one of those dimensions. You'll also notice, though, that if I look back to the third normal form for just a moment, um, vendor and region, in this case, are not associated directly with the sale. Here in my star schema, I have go gone ahead and linked those directly. The reason I'm doing that is because I am following the rules of not snowflaking. So because I don't want to snowflake, I can um, bring the relationship directly into the fact table. So that's definitely the way that works. Here we have a somewhat cleaner approach because uh, without any snowflaking, um, the dimensions do not have foreign key references. By the way, one thing to keep in mind is even without snowflaking, 
we might have something that looks like a foreign key in a dimension, which is okay, it's appropriate, as long as it references some kind of a standalone reference table. Um, if we look now to the vault, you'll look at the way we split this out to start with. I have a core set of business keys, and the business keys are tables now that only have the color blue in them because all it is is a business key. Likewise, I've got link tables that only have the color red because they're only associations. And let's just step back to what we've been learning so far at this course. Um, the hubs are just business keys, date, time, stamp, record, source, and a unique key. The links are just associations, and in this case, they have no descriptive information. In fact, all of the descriptive information is maintained in the satellites around it. Okay, so all the information is maintained in the satellites surrounding these things. Um, interesting thing that ends up happening is that when we go to an enterprise data warehousing approach, all of the time slice data, all of the context, all of the descriptive information, anything that's actually subject to change, anything that will be changing over time is maintained in the satellites. So if you look at this slide for a moment, consider the fact that the links and hubs have been grayed out because they don't have the obligation to track time slice iterative data. That data is all tracked inside the satellites, which makes the loading of the data vault and makes the whole structure very solid. So those things are, are really where they are. So if we look at it this way, um, if I have a customer in third normal form, or I have a customer uh, that's a dimension for my star schema, it's going to translate into a structure, as you can see here, that includes at a minimum a business key, a hub, and at least one, usually multiple, satellites around it. So the data vault approach is going to bring us to a point where we have uh, additional table structures broken out by the type of data. Let's take a minute and just go to the board quickly and uh, take a look at what actually ends up happening as we introduce um, changes into the data vault. So if I have, for example, a, a hub structure, it's called, um, called customer, uh, and I have some kind of a um, uh, other structure here, let's say, called uh, employee, and there's some form of a contact uh, that occurs, and let's just say for argument's sake that the contact that's occurring here um, is, uh, is captured in a link table. So there's a link structure here, there's a hub for customer, and there's a hub for employee, and of course no hub can exist without at least one satellite. So I have a satellite here, and I've got a satellite here. Okay. What ends up happening is I now have a new business area that comes in, something new that also relates to uh, the hub called customer, and I want to bring it in. Um, so let's say I've got that uh, customer class that we discussed before, and it's also a hub as a satellite, okay? This customer class is new, gets introduced to my new structure. I can simply, in the data vault now, create a new, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch colors here for just a moment. I, I can create now a new linking structure, okay? New link in here that says, this customer belongs to this class, okay? and attach this linking structure to the two of them. If there's any descriptive information that tells me about this customer's association with this class, I can put it off the link, but in reality, I really won't need to in this case. I define my customer here in that satellite. I define my class in this satellite. This link just tells, tells me that as of the date and time of this link, they belong together, and so I can put these in here. What's really important to note is that if I look at this structure here, Okay. Nothing impacted any of the table structures or the loaded time slice data in any of this structure when I made this new area be introduced into the model. 
All I did was borrow the foreign key here because the many side, just like an associative entity, is always going to be on the link side. So I migrated this key out, but there was no impact whatsoever on anything in the, in the uh, vault construct in order to introduce a new area. So let's get back to the side for a moment. What's really happening here is that we have an additional number of tables by splitting out things like uh, context, descriptive information, and satellites from the links, relationships, and associations from the business keys. But the value of this is that I'm able to introduce a new business area okay, into an existing model, absorb it with virtually no impact at all to the existing model. The biggest component here to remember is the impact that I'm saving is the impact of re-engineering. The reason we did this color review is to show some of the mechanics here of why this works. The reason it works is because we have migrated out all relationships, all associations into link tables. By doing that, the link tables have no other job but to, but to um, show us a relationship between two hubs or a hub and another link, um, which means they're free to be part of the backbone and don't have to be changed. Likewise, by moving all the descriptive information into a satellite, I avoid the issue of having to re-engineer a table that has descriptive context information. In thermal form and in star schema, as you saw prior uh, in the earlier part of this presentation, because that descriptive context information is mixed in with the keys and with the business key itself and the relationships, um, I will have to re-engineer those tables, and that is part of the pain process that we have in applying those techniques to pure enterprise warehousing. So I hope this gave you a, a different view, um, a slightly different approach to thinking about how the vault works, and um, we'll see you next time.